This is Mark and Charity's Coffee Podcast. Mark and Charity Coffee Podcast, Thursday, July 27th today. Coming to you from a soggy, rain-soaked Bay of Quinty Thursday morning. Mm-hmm. It was, a, yeah, it was an interesting start to the day. Not complaining, though, because we need it. Big time. I'm old. That's what happened. Oh, law needs it. <laughs> so you start talking like that, you know? Exactly. Most people are like, oh, we That's were going to Candace Wonderland. First my eyes. Yeah. <laughs> now it's like, now it's the weather. <laughs> so true. So true. People are like, so, yeah. oh, I was going to go golfing. Oh, we were doing all this. I'm like, oh, law yeah, needs no. it. Yeah. <laughs> You've hit that portion of the aging process. It's different because we really haven't been drenched with rain. Right, a lot of true. the rain we've received has been overnight. Yeah. Or or non-peak summer enjoyment hours. So it's okay. I had the, uh, the deluge. Now, of course, I'm right on the base, so we're in the lowlands. But it was, you know, the double wipers going, and mm-hmm. still, I was doing about 50 coming That's up what Highway you were 2. It wasn't it that was bad, bad when I came in. Yeah. It was it was steady, but it and wasn't I parked that bad. up here on the upper parking lot because I was afraid I wouldn't make it Did upstream. You in the pool yeah. that was forming down there. That's probably smart. Upstream, yeah, was just bad. So that was going on today. Uh, we had a new yacht rock song introduced for the Marine Report, Southern <laughs> Cross. That was fun. Okay. And then uh, you did Yeoman's great work with our buddy Brock from the News Department and Inquity.ca. Awesome. Oh. Brock's my favorite. We had Valerie on the show this Valerie morning. Valerie Miracle. She oh. was among several uh, local athletes, several Mohawks of the Bay of Quinney athletes, returning home this past weekend from the North American Indigenous Games. This involved 23 provinces, territories, and states, both in Canada and the USA. So uh, with 23 different groups. Ontario overall finished third. Number three. With 128 medals. Mm-hmm. One of those medals going to Valerie. A gold medal, in fact. Hey, Valerie, congratulations, uh, first of all, on the gold medal for the U14 oh. basketball. Nice work. Thank you. I appreciate it. Tell us about the team. Did you have to qualify to get on a provincial team, or did your team from the Bay of Quinty represent this province? Well, you have to, like, you had to try out for the team. Okay, so the players on this team were taken from across yeah. the province. Um, ah. Like, um, girls from all over Ontario would try out. Like it was like all over. So it was like girls from like six hours away would try out. It was like a really big thing. I think there was forty something girls that tried out just from this area. Okay. Wow. So tell us about the time from the time you found out you made the team to the journey to Halifax. Well, when I found out I made the team, I was like kind of shocked because I honestly didn't think I'd make it. I I love playing basketball, so I was like, this is gonna be fun. Sure. And when did that happen? When did you find out you were on the team? It was like April. Um, my coach um, is Jamie. He's actually was actually my teacher. He's my grade eight teacher. Wow. Great. Good. Right. Yeah. So he just pulled a couple of us girls aside who made it from like our school because there was five of us that made it from our school. Wow. Oh my gosh. That's I know. That's like half the team right there. Yeah. <laughs> so he like pulled us aside and he just kind of said like, "I'm telling you guys early because he was sending out the email like a week later." Mm-hmm. And then, but of course, training would start from there. We practice. The first time we played together was probably sometime in June. We um, he brought us all together to play this like little expedition game. He wanted to see how like we'd work together because mm-hmm. we have a couple girls from like Hamilton and Six Nations. So to bring so. to bring you all together in June and then travel to Halifax in July and and not that people shouldn't have been cheering for you or expecting something from you, but then to take gold. After just a month of playing together, that's incredible. Yeah, it was, it was, well, we had a really strong team. I feel like, like, when we were playing, we, like, we had really good chemistry already. Valerie Miracle of the Bay of Quinty Mohawks gold medal U14 basketball Mm -hmm. team. She hasn't been playing more than a year. (laughs) Kids, listen up, right? You got some talent, put it to work, find a coach who believes in you, and you can take it all the way till you get a gold medal. What's next, Valerie? As, as high school yeah. looms, <laughs> what is next? Oh, yeah, that's, that's the question. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to continue with basketball? Yeah, I'll try out in high school. I yeah. will do stuff like it. In like you're not going to have the medal in your locker. <laughs> No, 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 no. <laughs> you walk out to try out. Excuse me, everybody. No, it won't be in my locker. It'll be around my neck. 
not a girl. That's right. And what's so great is, I said, who'd you guys beat in the finals? And she said, oh, we beat Wisconsin. It was a great game. They're a really tough team. What was the final score? 66-33. <laughs> If you looked at the box score. I thought score, she said 63 at so first. Did I. I was like, was whoa, like, yeah, that would exactly. be a really good game. So most uh, people, when you beat them 66-33, don't describe yeah. it as a hard-fought game by a very good opponent. So good honor. And she's in she great age. How much composure yes. is that? So I know, very well spoken. Mm-hmm. Very smart, very conscientious, and great sportsmanship yeah, for that tremendous. age to, so. to be aware of that. And her mom backed that up because, again, I sent her a message just thanking her mom, Natasha, for allowing us to talk with Valerie and helping me set it up. And I just said, you know, how well-spoken she was and a pleasure. And she said she's she's just a sweet girl. She was one of the, If someone was injured or needed help, she was one of the first ones over to make sure they were okay on her team or opposing team, most often yeah. the opposing team. Mm-hmm. And it didn't go unnoticed. Other coaches commented. In fact, the coach from uh, one of the coaches from UConn gave her a kindness pin, shared a pin with her. Oh, and yeah. to be that age and that aware mm-hmm. and that kind mm-hmm. is just incredible. And so here's the other thing. she's got great things ahead of her. Sure. And she's got a gold medal. And a year ago this time, she wasn't playing basketball at yeah, all. Yeah, she just started last year. She's, oh, she's kind of picked it up. Which so is I, funny because... I wonder if it was a growth spurt, suddenly she's tall, well, or, or what is it that made her suddenly pick it up to the level where you can yeah. go win a gold medal in a team sport. I can't help, and you know because I've talked to you about my, my son Nathan, I couldn't help thinking about Nathan because Nathan just started playing this year. First time the light bulb kind of went off, and he's like, oh, I think I like this. I'm going to give it a try. Mm-hmm. And he's he's showed an interest in it and and asked to be part of camps and groups so we're kind of looking at that but when i heard she just started last year i'm like oh oh maybe yeah. maybe nathan could be doing something like Very this true. in a year yeah, yeah. but that blew my mind she'd started last year yeah this group was put together literally a month ago mm-hmm. and here they are in halifax winning gold mm-hmm. against all these other provinces states teams from around North America. It's pretty awesome. And Jamie, the coach, it sounds like, A, you've got a tremendous process to put it together because it also, in adult terms, doesn't sound like they had too many tough games. They won running away. So he, yeah. he so good A, on him. good on him to spot the talent yeah. because five members of the team are from the Bay of Quinty Mohawks. Yeah. They, they went all over the of province. The basketball team, yeah. Yeah, but five of them take the same school bus. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> so... Good on you yeah. to be able to spot all of that talent, put it together, which probably has from a you know, chemistry point of view of team sports, right? Yeah. That helps to have a lot of them That's know each other. That's what I mean other. to be, yeah. and it certainly would go a long way because you think mm-hmm. they've only been together a month to be that gel, gel mm-hmm. together and, and that supportive of each other after a month. You want to have five from here would help a lot. And thanks to social media, all of them can be friends for life now. Exactly. They can stay in touch forever. It does make you wonder, and we asked her what was next, and I realized she's still quite young. But Grade I think eight. <laughs> these connections she made through this experience, how that's going to play out sure, yeah. as she gets older. Yeah, like she'll she'll go to high school, you know, perhaps here. Maybe she'll go to Napanee. Maybe she'll go to mm-hmm. I, I don't East but Side. But she's met I don't people know. from all over North Amer- yeah. North America now right. so, who are interested in basketball, yeah. who play at her level. Now going to high schools in Hamilton and the like. Then pretty soon you're still friend- you're gonna start picking where to go to university. Mm-hmm. Well, where are you going? You know, all of a sudden you can. Or make maybe up they and- find themselves on these teams again next year. Yeah. For or as you pointed out, the Olympics. Like, who knows? It's it's kind of like, wow, where are these kids going to go? Yeah. And, and what's going to happen over the next few years? The whole world opens up for them when mm-hmm. they take part in things like this. And a year and things, ago, she didn't even want to play exactly, basketball. Exactly. Things that you, she might not have even considered before or thought. Exactly. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't know I could do that. Mm-hmm. Now I mm-hmm. want to try doing this. It's funny. The language that you use, you said, you know, when Nathan said, I want to give this a try, step one. Mm-hmm. And step two is, okay, I'm going to apply myself now and see whether, and then... Well, it's different when they say it, right? But that's the point, as, right? Yeah. As a yeah. parent, you you sign them up for things, hoping that something yeah. will catch. Because they want to give it a try. Exactly. And basketball has been the first thing that Nathan has come to us and said, I think I, think I want to try this. Now he wants to apply himself. Exactly. And then it's like... And it does change. How do I get better? Okay, now I'm going to find coaching. Now I'm going to find other teams or players who are good mm-hmm. that I can learn from. And that's when you go, no, okay, now this is on you. Yeah. And I don't have to push you to be in nope. it. Nope. This is at on you. At all. And if I have to push you, then... 
then that's not right. No. Then you shouldn't be doing it if it's only and doing it for be, me. she would be, Valerie would be, what, a year older than he is. So, yeah, so, so yeah, there you are. Kind of like, oh, okay. Mom and dad, so that's pretty cool. That's really, really cool. It was cool. very cool. It was a pleasure, absolute pleasure it speaking with Valerie this morning. Loved having her on the show. And as everybody knows, we're world famous for it, our 6 o'clock hour is the romance hour <laughs> on the show. World famous, eh? And it's not even true. I'm just <laughs> I'm trying to find something to hang the show it's on. It's usually sports, but which here, is Mark's uh, love language. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, so true. Oh, my gosh. That's a burn I'm not going to come back from. Up it's not comes, a burn. It's an observation. It's just a fact. MIT, not Match.com. No, not, a little more um, re- re- respectable. Repute. Not Cosmopolitan no. Magazine. Yeah, this is MIT. Smart people go to MIT. <laughs> Which of the two genders in a relationship will be the first to say, I love you? I would have put my money on the fact it was women. 61% uh, 61 out of every 100 relationships is the man who says, Maybe I love you. Maybe it's more first. women know first. Okay. Okay. But wait for the man to say it first because you so, don't want to freak them out. Okay. Did you know? Okay. I'm sorry. I hate to put you yeah, on the spot. No, You're the woman. Go. Did you know Open book. that you were in love with Wayne before he told you that he loved you? Before he told me? Yeah, so yes. Because what you're saying, so then you knew before yes. he said it. Yes. But he still said it first? Yes. So that's exactly what you're claiming, right? Yes. Okay. I knew. Right. I knew. So the order is date, she knows. He says, she says. Is that fair then? Is that what you're saying? Yes, but, and continue with your story because okay, yeah. the second part of this kind of doesn't right. really fit in with that, so but I would agree with when what you asked, just pointed out. When asked, how long into the yeah. relationship does he say I love you, the mm-hmm. average answer is 97 days. Which I think is very respectable. Three I think months. that's that's fair. You can you can say that after three yeah. months. It doesn't and not freak, freak you out. people out. Yes. Okay. I think that's good. So you dated. It's working. It's yes. three months. You, and according to my theory, she already knows. She has already felt the tingles. Yes. but hasn't said and he anything. He has said it. He has now said, "I love you." Women now wait on average how long before they'll say something other than this is ditto. ridiculous. And the answer is six weeks. Yeah. So I don't understand. I, She's hmm. felt it first. He said it first, and she'll wait six more six weeks, more weeks before, before she before says, "I love you." So that's five months into the relationship, which still is so. I know, long. but to wait that long, because no. I honestly don't know when I said it to him. When the first time I said, "I love you," to Wayne, I don't. I don't remember saying it. I remember the moment I felt it. Okay. Right. And then he said it first. Okay. How much longer after that? Do you remember? I probably I would have either said it at the same time wow. or within twenty four hours. Wow! Because I knew. Right. I was just mm-hmm. waiting for him. Really? Kind of thing. Yes. Were you ready to say it then? No. Okay. I wasn't ready to say it, but again, as I said, I I knew, I felt it. Mm-hmm. I was just kind of waiting for him to have the light bulb moment. Because what if he didn't? Or you knew, I too. didn't want to freak him out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> honestly, honestly, no. I yeah. just, I was, yeah, I was just kind of tiptoe in the water. Okay. We'll just wait and yeah. see how this goes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But that was but really 40, interesting. But yeah. Yeah. To wait six weeks. 40. So they're 97 to days to say back, I love you. And regardless. Then 42 days. Regardless. As, okay, get rid of all of that. If he says, I love you. Mm-hmm. And you're feeling it. No, forget that. Oh. Even if you're even even if you don't like no, even if you don't have that feeling yet, six mm-hmm. weeks to me is ridiculous. Because once he says it, that should start the gears. Yeah, that should have you starting to question. Okay, do I feel the same way? And actually, think about it to know. Mm. I don't think it would take six weeks to come up with an answer. Yeah, or a response. Because I'm not sure. And please correct me if I'm wrong. Because I don't want to start any but i'm not sure a man is more vulnerable at that moment when he says it and she doesn't say it back i'm not sure there's much more of a more open book than that well it it could go either way that's why i didn't say it first because i wasn't ready to be that vulnerable right with him it's that's a that's a big thing that's a huge step that's a huge step to say it out loud and if they're willing to say it then Mm -hmm. to wait six weeks to say something back no the other part (laughs) of it might be that she's heard it a handful of times before 
And the first time she heard from it from him or other from people, from somebody else. Okay, right. So she jumps in right away. Well, I love you too, and then realized, no, I didn't. I got out of it. Well, I got then hurt. I would hope she would blah, explain blah, blah, blah. that to him. Okay, maybe, maybe, because maybe what we're 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 looking at are the relationships that lead to marriage. Yes, not just. You know, Random. the clingers that say, I love you. Well, then if that's over the case, I the would almost date. be stepping away. Yeah. OK, maybe. Yeah. It's so. Yeah. But I don't know. Mark. He'll say it first. She'll say, I love you six, six weeks later. I'm with you. Someone needs to explain that. to <laughs> yeah, me. I don't. I mean, it's all hard. I'm the type me. of person that would feel so guilty. <laughs> not not saying it at, like I would yeah. if they said it and I didn't feel it or say it back I would feel horrible yeah. I would feel like the worst person would you need to have a sit down do you think if I didn't feel the same way yes yeah. Yeah. I don't think I could go on six weeks mm-hmm. if I didn't feel the same way I'd be like oh okay maybe we need to take a break here let's go for coffee because clearly you're feeling more than I, than I am and I don't want you to get hurt and exactly hold, and, to be f- and now it's weird up. yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's now weird. it's weird yeah and not like I'm weird Weird, but weird, weird. This whole thing's weird now. Yeah. It's just so, weird. So, wow. Anyway, so MIT. It's crazy. So again, it's not Mash.com, it's science. Maybe it's just Americans. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, we in Canadian. Yeah. MIT. You know. Like that's in that's in Boston. So, right? right yeah, right. that's where I'm thinking. So. Yeah. That's an American. Maybe it's. Yeah. They're so, just different. Yeah, somebody once told me <laughs> that in Manitoba, the way they say I love you is a uh, nice spot, get in the truck. That's <laughs> To say I love you in Manitoba. Uh, I told you that. <laughs> oh, somebody who lives in Manitoba, I think. Oh, my, I've never uh, heard that before. I'm going to remember that, though. How do they say I love you in Arkansas? Nice oh, place in the truck. Yeah, no thanks. Uh, Arkansas would be very different than Manitoba. Yeah. But, yeah, that's, very true. that's interesting. Coming up tomorrow on the show, we got your dad joke to get into it, and then, and then we're, we're beginning the vacation portion of Mark and Charity Mornings. I'm going to take As a week. As Mark checks out. And then <laughs> Charity's going to take a week after the long weekend. And then we're not together again until the middle of August. Now i got I another week somewhere in there. I know. So it's, uh, okay, so there we go. So big show tomorrow, I think. We'll see. We'll find out. <laughs> Waking up with us here at 95.5 Hits FM. Have a great day.